Hi, it's Dwyer. It's June 6, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's a bet on the board. I know this is going to sound controversial. Um, let me give a little story leading into the bet. Uh, heavyweight fight, one of the major fights of the summer. Big baby Jared Anderson against Martin Bacoli, who has arguably the best nickname in the heavyweight division. He calls himself the last king of Scotland. <laughs> if you remember the movie on Idi Amin uh, that got Forrest Whitaker the Oscar, you understand what a devastating nickname that is. Right? They're going to be having a dust-up this summer, and of course, we're hearing about Terrence Crawford helping Jared Anderson prepare for the fight. So, people are going crazy online. They're saying, oh, wow, Terrence Crawford, this gives Anderson the edge. Does it? Let's take a step back for a moment. The bet I'm recommending here, and it's an early bet, the lines are going to shift. What I found is sometimes fights are just mispriced early. You got to jump in early. Then as it adjusts, you can figure out how you want to hedge it and stuff like that. So this is an unhedged position right now on June the 6th, 2024, and I'm looking around for it because where I bet, they haven't posted it yet. But if you go to oddschecker.com right now, you're going to see that Martin Bacoli somehow is going off at a plus 150 underdog. <laughs> plus 150. Hey, I'll be the casino's Huckleberry here. I like Martin Bacoli at these odds with the intention of hedging later. I don't expect Bacoli to be a plus 150 when the fight goes off. If he is, well, somebody's making a big mistake. Now let's back up a little bit. You remember few years ago, a guy named Canelo, one of the big names in boxing, had a stablemate, a guy named Ryan Garcia, another big name, right? Both of these guys today, both of them are multimillionaires, right? Understand too, Canelo's trainer was Eddie Reynoso, another big name. Now, Ryan Garcia was hanging around Canelo. Ryan Garcia would drop Canelo's name in interviews. Today, years later, you look at Canelo, he's defensively blessed. Right? Very hard to find his head. He has his head right around arm level. He fights low. It's very hard to land a hook on his head. Not only that, of course, Canelo... <laughs> It's hard. You can't even tee off on Canelo because punches are coming back at you. And they're hard punches. They're the kind of punches that could drop a Jaime Munguia recently. That could drop a John Ryder recently. Right now, by contrast, you look at Ryan Garcia today. And Ryan Garcia, you can find his head. Unlike Canelo, who can crouch down and fight low, even against sluggers like Jaime Munguia. I'm just talking about his most recent fight. Ryan Garcia, by contrast, is getting clubbed by Oscar Duarte, wasn't he? Right? Garcia looks like a guy with a great left hook who is standing upright and is just trying to throw his A-plus home run punch. But folks, it's hard to imagine more different fighters than Canelo and Ryan Garcia. But yet, they were in the same gym. They were stablemates. They were both training under Eddie Reynoso. Now, the fact that Terrence Crawford, who, by the way, is preparing for his own fight in a new weight class. <laughs> in other words, Crawford has his own camp, his own fight to think about. The fact that Crawford is hanging out with Jared Anderson 
And we all know Crawford's good friends with Shakur Stevenson, right? We all know that. But the fact that Crawford is hanging out with Jared Anderson is supposed to lead me to believe what exactly? That Ryan Anderson, who has skills, right? Anderson's ambidextrous. Anderson has a great sidestep. Anderson has heavy power. Anderson can have heavy volume. The volume in the Jerry Forrest fight is unusual for a heavyweight. But the fact that Anderson is now hanging around Terrence Crawford is supposed to lead me to believe that Anderson is going to come in and he's going to be a, a different fighter every fight like Terrence Crawford. It's going to lead me to believe that Anderson is going to be able to destroy the Errol Spences of the world when he had a problem against Charles Martin in his backyard. That fight went the distance. Didn't Martin take that fight on short notice? Who was Anderson's last fight against? Ryan Murdy, some name like that. And that guy was just in a defensive mode for practically the entire fight. You, you didn't get the feeling that Anderson was fighting one of the top heavyweights. Right, folks, Anderson's a young fighter. Let me tell you something. Crawford's also friends with a guy named Richard Torres, who, by the way, is another Bob Arum heavyweight. Right, the water is deep at top rank. I would argue, based on what I've seen, that Richard Torres, the Olympic silver medalist, who's in his mid-20s, Right, might be the best young heavyweight that Bob Arum has. Right, big baby, don't get me wrong. Great highlights, um, great spirit. But at the same time, I believe young fighters are young fighters. Right, Martin Bacoli, by contrast, is in his 30s. He's only lost once. And that was to Michael Hunter, who is fighting tomorrow against Cassius Cheney, a knockout puncher. Right? Understand, Hunter fought Usyk. It was a pretty good fight. Then Usyk took over. Usyk's stamina is what it is. Hunter, of course, has a story where he talks about just becoming a father and how it distracted him and how he didn't do things the right way in terms of cutting weight. He didn't have the discipline that he should have had for that Usyk fight. And he wants a rematch with Usyk, as I'm sure half of the heavyweight division wants a fight with Usyk. Right? But just understand, folks, Hunter is a guy, <laughs> Hunter is a guy who not only has beaten Ustinov, not only stopped Bacoli, but you might recall his fight against Alexander Povetkin where Hunter came out, looked spectacular. Then Povetkin came back in the fight, and that fight was ruled a draw. That's the only guy Bacoli has lost to. Bacoli is supposed to be a regular sparring partner to Tyson Fury. Bacoli has a unique fight style, right? You see it in his fight against Olympic gold medalist Tony Yoka, right? When he beat Yoka as a professional, Bacoli is that rare long-range hooker, right? He comes out. He's not even quite in the pocket. He opens up with both hands. He's a high-volume guy early, and he riddles an opponent with shots. Tony Yoka is overmatched. Tony Yoka is losing all of the early rounds. Now, let me point out, I sense that Bacoli has a stamina problem. I sense that Bacoli slows down as a fight goes on. There is a possibility that Jared Anderson is able to stick around, see the older fighter tiring, and then be able to have youth, enthusiasm, straighter punches on his side. There is a possibility that Jared Anderson wins the fight, but folks, this isn't a plus 150 fight. When I looked at the line, I was expecting Bacoli to be the favorite. I don't care where they're fighting. 
right? I don't care where they're fighting. Bacoli is a KG vet, right? This is like those old Westerns where you had mottos like, have gun, will travel, right? Bacoli is going to come out and he's going to set a pace. Now, if Jared Anderson falls into that pace, Let's say it's frantic and Jared Anderson falls into the frantic pace. You have to ask yourself, is Anderson's defense going to hold up? Bacoli can drive 100 miles an hour, right? Anderson showed you he could drive 100 miles an hour against Jerry Forrest, but by Anderson's own admission, he got hit in the mouth in that fight. He lost his composure, right? Let me point out, we're here celebrating this Daniel Dubois fight with Philippe Ergovic, right? Dubois, young guy, fast hands, heavy power, right? We know who he is. Dubois gets hit in the mouth so many times early in that fight, right? That you realize that there was an experience gap in that fight. Older fighters don't get hit in the mouth like that. I'm expecting Jared Anderson to get hit in the mouth here. Right? Understand, Bacoli's fought tough customers, like Carlos Tacum, for example. Right? You know, other grizzled vets who have been around, who have resumes. Tacum, of course, fought Alexander Povetkin. Right? You know, let's just say Anderson does not have that level of resume. Hanging around Terence Crawford while Crawford <laughs> while Crawford is preparing for his own fight doesn't tell me that suddenly Crawford's elite skill level is going to migrate over to Jared Anderson. Just like Canelo, one of the best in the game, could not find a way to teach Ryan Garcia Canelo's level of defense. Canelo's ability to fight low in the pocket. Canelo's ability to hide his punches. Right? Ryan Garcia could watch a fight and say, Garcia's going to throw a left hook. I know it's coming. You know it's coming. With Canelo, there are fights where things are sudden. Right? Billy Joe Saunders gets hit with the uppercut you didn't see coming. Right? So Jared Anderson... Sorry, folks, I'm not buying the narrative that I hang out with Terrence, we share a gym, right? Terrence is training for his own fight, and suddenly I'm Terrence Crawford. <laughs> I, I don't believe life's that easy, right? Let me also tell you, too, you've had some great trainers. I mean great trainers, some of the best in boxing, with some great talents, and I mean great talents, former heavyweight champions, and it doesn't mesh, right? Understand, Robert Garcia trained Anthony Joshua for a fight against Usyk, right? Joshua has moved on to Ben Davison, and he's magnificent with, with Davison. But he didn't click with Garcia, who has fighters like Bam Rodriguez. Gar Robert Garcia himself was a fighter, damn good one. They called him during his prime. The professor. Right? And so, again, understand. Terrence Crawford, great fighter. Arguably the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? Jared Anderson, unbeaten heavyweight. Tremendous power. Tremendous straight right hand. Tremendous. Put those two together, that doesn't mean they have any chemistry. Especially when you got Bomack there and he's saying, hey, Terrence, what about our fight? You know, it's like, hey, player, if you want to be a trainer, shouldn't you wait until after your boxing career here? You're unbeaten. We have everything at stake. We can't spend a lot of time on this young heavyweight who is picking one of the dangerous heavyweights from this deep heavyweight reservoir that the public has been overlooking. Right? I've told you several times here. And I believe this is the deepest I've seen the heavyweight division. 
right? I'm here talking about guys like Michael Hunter, and I'm sure many people are saying, who, who, even though Hunter has beaten guys, even though Hunter's fought Usyk already, right? I'm here talking about Martin Bacoli. People are like, who, who, even though Bacoli sparred with Usyk. Bacoli spars with Tyson Fury. Bacoli has beaten Olympic gold medalist Tony Oka. Right? And so just to understand, young guys are popular until they make a mistake. Right? Daniel Dubois was unbeaten. He ran into a guy, another silver medalist at the Olympic Games, Joe Joyce. And you know the rest. Um, Dubois was clueless on what to do with Joe Joyce's jab. Clueless. Did not go the distance in that fight. Now we're celebrating Daniel Dubois. Uh, Dubois is figure, figuring out things on the job, right? And he's had a string of high-profile fights against top heavyweights, right? People like Usyk, for crying out loud. Uh, people like Philippe Ergovic, right? Big Baby hasn't fought Usyk. Hasn't fought Ergovic. Right? We're hearing about a sparring session with Tyson Fury. Okay, great. Let me just say this, though. Right? Other guys spar with Fury. You don't think Joe Parker has been in the ring with Fury? You don't think Martin Bacoli's been in the ring with Fury? Right? So people need to tread carefully here with this heavyweight division. Don't get fooled into thinking that all of these elite heavyweights are the ones you're seeing at these Saudi Arabian shows. Right? You got a lot of heavyweights out there right now. The division is packed. I keep telling people that Luis Ortiz would be a problem for any young fighter. Right? Ortiz, decorated amateur. Look up his amateur career. And he's a slick southpaw. Right? That would create problems for people. You don't hear about Luis Ortiz that much. I'm glad to see Andy Ruiz has a fight scheduled. Andy Ruiz has been inactive, um, inactive lately. These guys would give young guys nightmares. The casino right now is offering a plus 150 according to oddschecker.com. I can't find it uh, where I bet, but I'm going to wait and hope it's still around 150 when I get a chance to place action. It might not be. Somebody at the casino might wake up. Maybe it's a fan thing. Boxing fans might figure out that Big Baby has been well marketed and well managed. Right? Fighting guys like Charles Martin on short notice. Right? Maybe the fans will realize, wow, you know, Bacoli is a bad man. Maybe the fans might actually stumble into that Yoka fight or the Carlos Tacum fight and realize that Bacoli hits hard. Folks, at this early date here, and again, it's June 6, 2024, right? Things could happen. Fighters can get cut in training camp, as we saw with Tyson Fury that led to a... Uh, postponement, a delay in that Usyk fight, right? You might hear stories out of camp that guys are out of shape or that guys aren't holding their own or what have you, right? But let's just say the casino is making a mistake in my eyes this June 6, 2024 by giving you a plus 150 on the KG vet who behind the scenes is sparring with the best, Right? Whoever you think the best is, Usyk, uh, Tyson Fury, let's just say he's sparring with elites. And of course, you have a young guy who couldn't take out Ryan Murdy in the last fight. Couldn't even force Murdy to come to him, right? With the idea of, hey, I've won the early rounds. You're here trying to beat me. Why do both of us think that I should be chasing you when I'm ahead by several rounds in the fight and you're the guy who's lesser known in the country in which we're fighting. Right? It's tough being a young heavyweight. 
I think we're kidding ourselves, believing that just by being in the gym with, <laughs> with Terrence Crawford, suddenly you're Terrence Crawford. Right? I'm guessing there are a lot of guys who train with Anthony Joshua who are not Anthony Joshua. Food for thought. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand, too, if we're to believe that merely being in a gym gives you special powers, Bacoli's been in a gym with Usyk. Right? Why is no one talking about that? Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. I'm taking this early time here, weeks before the fight, to try to get action on Martin Bacoli, the last king of Scotland, at a plus 150. Understand how bad I think the line is. If, when I get a chance to make a bet, they tell me it's a plus 135, I'm going to feel lucky with that. You can imagine how lucky I'm going to feel if it's still a plus 150. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.